Boston, Massachusetts. It's theCUBE, covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to Boston, everyone. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in tech coverage. Darren Harris is here, he's the CEO of HTI Labs. He's joined by John Glass, who's the CTO. CEO and CTO, we got the, the right people here to talk to. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Thank it's you. great to be here. Yeah, so we were just talking offline about your relationship with, with HPE, mm -hmm. you know, formerly HP. Uh, you've been working with those guys for a while, I guess. But, uh, so tell us about this event. You're over from London. Yeah. What's, what do you got going on here? Um, so we're here to uh, demonstrate kind of uh, the extension to our product. We've made our product called Schematic and we've extended it to uh, access the uh, HP Haven On Demand functionality, the APIs that expose the applied machine learning APIs. So, um, Schematic Our Product, it's an, it's an Excel-centric product from, from a user interface, but we extend it to handle unstructured data, um, solve a lot of the technical complexities and, and scalability issues that you have with Excel at the box. And what we've really done is taken the Haven On Demand APIs one step further than just simplified uh, for users to access and, and basically makes that any user of Excel can access those APIs, experiment with them, and run unstructured analytics against the, uh, the Haven On Demand backends. So John, you've built a platform that extends to Excel, so the, there's a user, I see Excel, but then you've got your backend you know, yeah, behind it? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, Excel is, is really the sort of premier you know, business analysis tool for, for people that are you know, in all kinds of industries, looking at all kinds of data. Um, but people do struggle with you know, data volumes and, and you know, structured and particularly unstructured and semi-structured data. So our product addresses that. You know, it keeps the core Excel experience that users love, but it allows them to work with bigger data sets. It allows them to offload um, processing to you know, things like Vertica um, and, and now Haven. Um, so people can suddenly process data that they didn't, they didn't realize they could still deal with in Excel. So, so what, what's that process like then, connecting into the, uh, the Haven APIs? Um, I mean, it's it's really as simple as you know, it's a function. So you know, we have people that we we're working with who have been using like a, a VLOOKUP or a find function in Excel um, to try and get something out of a piece of text, and that's really hard. You know, if you have um, uh, medical trials data and you're looking for for drug names, you know, they're they're written in a sort of weird kind of Latin. Um, there are lots of variations. There are lots of misspellings. So you know, what we're kind of saying to people is, take your spreadsheet where you've got find you just replace that with haven.extractentities. You know, it's really as simple as that. So we're trying to make the, the bar to entry as, as low as possible. You know, the Haven team have done a great job of making these APIs really well encapsulated, really well described, really easy to understand conceptually. And we're trying to remove the technical barrier and give them to end users um, as well as app developers. So you do the Haven entity extraction, present that in Excel, and your eyes don't bleed. Exactly. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. What does it look like to the user, and what kind of function to, to, a, to an Excel user? What kind of power are you giving them that they didn't have before? So, so the, the kind of the, the core IP, I suppose, of what makes it different is that we have um, within a cell what we call a data link, and that data link is a pointer to um, unstructured data that kind of sits outside of the core experience of you know mapping everything down to rows and columns when you work with it. So, when you look at Excel, what you see is a viewer on the right-hand side that uh, allows us to visualize these data links and work with them. So users can perform operations with other functions over the data links and kind of build up a whole dependency graph of calling different functions and then debugging into the viewer and then collapse that data back into Excel once they're finished with it. Tell us more about the company. How long have you guys been around? And how so, um, HCI was founded in, in 2012. Um, the core backbone of the team um, all work together at uh, an investment bank in the UK. We've been working with spreadsheets and front office risk uh -huh. and risk systems for years. Um, we're a member of the London St Stock Exchange Elite Program, a uh, technology program for um, fast track growth uh, companies. Um, and yeah, uh, we, we primarily are doing a lot of work for energy trading companies. You know, anybody that really has Excel um, and they've got into an unwieldy mess or you know, they've got some structural, they're lacking governance, which is a real key thing. Uh, we, we work with them, we, we leverage Schematic as an accelerator's platform, and we help them simplify their estate. They may have stability problems or complexity problems or lack of transparency problems. And for us, you know, where we interface into pricing APIs or in-house risk systems, accessing a REST API such as Haven On Demand is just a natural step. And really the goal is all about putting the tools directly into the hands of users, removing the bottlenecks from core teams, and allowing the users to, to innovate and understand the data, well they understand the data more than just depending on technologies to interpret that. And that's kind of the holy grail of big data, isn't it? It's like, yeah. As opposed mm -hmm. to insights for the few, 
which is yeah. sort of the big criticism of decision support and BI, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and even big data with data scientists. You got a, a data scientist if you can find him or her. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this notion of you know citizen analyst and. So you're seeing that actually in the real world. Yeah, I think there was so much complexity, you know, in big data, all the tool sets, you know, the, the, all the components, and there's just a sea of things. And what you see with, I suppose, Haven on Demand for the first time is the packaging and the robustness and the simplicity is making it so much more accessible. And interestingly enough, when you start to consume uh, from the analytic, you're agnostic to the underlying storage platform. You have connectors, it goes in, it could be MongoDB, it could be Hadoop, it could mm -hmm. be whatever but they've really lowered the bar. You know, in terms of you could literally subscribe for an API key, you could access this stuff instantly, and straight away you could do sentiment analysis. We could take this, this, this broadcast, convert it into text, and run sentiment from a sheet and do that, and anybody could do that that could use Excel. That's, um, well, you know, we, we saw the video today, Robert Youngjohn sort of teased us with that, yeah. you know, the ease of use, and you're saying it's really, it's really that simple. It's, it's ro robust, and, and, and if you could confirm that, uh, and then I got a follow-up question. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it's really it's really straightforward. Um, I think you know one of the one of the nice things the Haven team have done is you know Idle is a is a big powerful platform, and you know in on in the on-prem version there are many hundreds of, of APIs that you can use. So so actually there's a there's a skill involved in distilling that down to things that are that are simple and very clear and, and very easy to use, um, and that's kind of what we like is it's something that people can can self-discover. You know they can. Um, they can work with the, the individual API functions. There's also combinations, which has launched this week, um, which we've been, you know, we've mm. been part of. We've we've got support for that now, kind of already in Schematic, um, which we're quite we're quite pleased to kind of to, to get out there first with. Um, and that means that people can put these things together. They can chain operations together, um, and do things like, um, uh, you know, language language agnostic sentiment processing, which is one of the combinations that's been launched as, a, as an example. So, you know, it's a simple idea, but you feed some text into, a, into the language recognition module. That tells you what language it is. You then take that, the, the knowledge of what language it is, and you feed that text into sentiment analysis. So you can take any text in any language, and you can do sentiment analysis on it as a single, as a single call from a single cell in your spreadsheet. So you've got this platform, you license this platform as a subscription? Or? Yeah, so there's, yeah. there's um, I think I might have said, there's, there's four components. There's, there's the workbench, which is on a per user license, and depending on if they want to um, you know, manage and, and, and govern the assets, so effectively think of it like source control and all the best software engineering practices applied to spreadsheets. We've kind of built a manager, and we're also really big on, on capturing usage metrics to allow transparency on what people are doing and how they're doing it for kind of core people to, to govern that, like core IT teams. There's a server where you may offload. You can define effectively calculations or algorithms from Excel and emit those as, as code or, or batch file, or, or batch files, but, but actual code to run on, on the server, part of a batch. And the portal is all about sharing it. So you can literally take a sheet, use a Haven On Demand API, and um, publish that to, the, to, to a web portal and view that on a phone. So you as an Excel user can go right through the whole journey, and other people can take that, because an input cell in Excel is the same as a text edit box in, in a form. So you can effectively divide, define a whole calculation tree and then and then push it out for consumption. Are you able to access external data from from within Haven, or is the is the user supplying yeah. the data and you're supplying the processing? So we 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 can you know we have a number of data sources that are supported kind of out of the box by Schematic, um, and we're constantly adding new connectors. So all of the things that you would you would probably expect you know CSV files, XML, JSON. Um, like web scraping, web APIs, so you know, grabbing HTML data, grabbing XML, um, connecting to relational databases. So you know, Vertica is one of the relational data sources that, that we support. And essentially it means that people can pull everything together into Excel. Um, they have a, a, a view onto a table that's, that's held remotely. It might have you know, hundreds of millions of rows or more in it. They can have a, a, a sort of remote view onto that table and they can work with it and pretend that it's there you know, on their desk and it's actually you know, all happening on the mm -hmm. server. But when they're ready to start combining things together, you can create these mashups. You know, and the, the real power and the real value comes from the local data, the local keys and things that you, that you have available, and the, the, big, you know, the big data sources that you've got access to remotely. So what? you license this by user, it's you by, said. By user and, and, and then by the, module. And then the components are kind okay. of re related yeah. to the, you know, how far deep they go. And then you just sort of bundle in the whatever haven costs the connectors, are associated yeah. with that. Yeah, it's, it's an extension library. What we've actually done is we can, the APIs that we expose as we call them first class functions into Excel, they themselves can be defined in, in sheet templates that are then pushed and compiled and then pushed back to other users. So the idea that a power user of Excel 
could define a new API and push it to other users to consume. So really looking at the whole way is how can you empower non-programmers to um, self-publish, uh, generate new APIs and share them and abstract the complexity from other users that might not be so advanced. Mm -hmm. So your your platform will discover Excel on on my client and then yeah, yeah absolutely. You, would so you can it. you could just install it. Um, so yeah, our you know the the minimum barrier is one installation on one desktop machine, and immediately you know all the data sources that you have access to, um, that you know anything that we support you you can get hold of. You know we write custom connectors for our clients as well. So lots of clients have you know, legacy systems that are often quite sort of painful to, to operate with, um, or they have internal APIs that they use. Um, and we, you know, we, we can give, um, you know, analysts, risk managers, you know, people doing the line of business work access to these data sources. Um, and that has a really nice effect. You know, it, it makes them more effective, but it also makes the systems better because people start playing with the systems. They start trying, you know, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? Um, and you get a really nice feedback loop, you know, with, with the developers as well, people get very excited about the fact that they can push new versions, their, their users can try them, they can, they can actually iterate the development process faster as well. So are you enabling this through a community or through a code exchange? Have a so, so at the moment we've kept it with corporates and there's downloads. We haven't really pushed it. You know, we've been really focusing the last couple of months on adding Haven support and, and the core infrastructure. But um, our strategy is to you know get the message out there now, really, and, and start to put it in loads in lots of people's hands because. Right. HPE said that they have 70 uh, APIs in Haven yeah. right now. Are you yeah. looking? What what is, what are your we, next uh, uh, <laughs> your next extensions you're looking at? So we're looking to extend support to allow combinations to be created in from Excel and then pushed up. Um, but Can you give an example of a combination? So that would be the uh, language independent sentiment, where you have right. these, you have right. the 70 APIs, and they're quite powerful in their own right. But when you start to combine them, and you start to so recognize um, the language and then determine sentiment. Yeah, yeah. That, that's correct. Yeah. So that, that is an example is, of a combination. This is a this is a sort of key part of API design, I guess. Is you know have units of functionality. Don't, don't try and do too much in one place. Right. So you know, as as IT developers. Um, you know, internal dev teams should be providing units of useful functionality to their users and leaving the users to creatively combine them. And I think when, you know, when applications that people use start to presuppose the way that those units of functionality will be combined, you actually lose you know, power, you lose capability. Um, so that's, that's part of our philosophy and that's really, and it's one of the things that's really drawn us to Haven because we think that, that you know, the, the units of functionality that Haven On Demand provides and this combination framework together is, is just hugely powerful. It's and really you, exciting. And you license Haven by the function that you so, invoke? So Haven or? is, is uh, licensed on a usage structure. For the whole? Uh, for the whole, yeah, for, for yeah. based on you know, how frequency. So what's great about it is there's a free tier that you can actually go and, and get quite a lot of functionality out at the moment. So you could download our trial schematic, you could download, uh, you could get an API key for Haven and you, you can mm. just start today. You could, you know, and just to give you an example of some of the power, there was a report in the UK recently about the Iraq war with the Chilcot report. It's 2.2 million words in size, three times the entire work of Shakespeare. With that, with Excel, we were able to analyze that, look at notable people that were mentioned, rank them by the number of mentions, and sort that with a reference of where they were mentioned through the document. And that's just one thing with one document that somebody could do at home with their PC now. And I don't know of anything else that, you know, a combination of that power that people can do that. Are you at the scale where you're ha having to pay for a haven yet, or...? or? Um, not at the moment. No, we're not, no, we're no, not no, sure. We think, <laughs> we, we think they might be being kind to us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to mention that in case somebody's going to give us a big deal at the end. I want to see if I can get that deal. We yeah. have a need for this. Now, why Haven? Why not? Did, did you look at Watson APIs or other So, So I think that, um, that, well, wh why, why a big company, I suppose, and then we can talk about the, the other bit. So there's a lot of stuff out there that might be open source or libraries and things like sure. that. And when you, when you deal with enterprise customers, you want to back onto something. You know that somebody's going to be behind there in a robust way with the enterprise. So you never, you know, there's a lot of really cool stuff that's in research, but with our enterprise type customers, we kind of have to have that. In terms of, um, in terms of knowing a bit of background about the Idle platform, yeah, there's a lot of power under the hood. And really, um, from our perspective, we believe that this is only just scratching the surface of, of the capability that's going to come. So um, Watson we can look out, but I don't, I don't really think they've kind of got as advanced yet in terms of the APIs that they're exposing. I'm sure it's a gap they look to close, but you know, like I said, knowing what's under the hood, in the autonomy engine or the idle, the idle platform, um, we think there'll be a lot of innovation coming out. Had you worked with Idle prior to the HP acquiring the um, company? So, so I, I had colleagues back in when I was in the, uh, the industry, and I knew very much about what was going on with um, analysis of unstructured data, especially around trade confirmations, 
legal documents and the use cases. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were a lot more in the structure pricing, risk management, Monte Carlo farms, and, and calc grid mm -hmm. space. Yeah. What about visualization? H how do you handle that? Is it through Excel, or do you have um, another visual? I mean, our, or? yeah, our, our core, you know, our, our core product is, is schematic. It runs in Excel, and you know, Excel has some very good visualization capability. So really, anything that you can. You know, do in terms of visualization in Excel. You can take data that you've you've run through schematic functions. You can pull that back out into a sheet. You can you know you can do charts. You can do graphs. Um, part of the the portal aspect of our platform is um, you know is an ability to surface the same content that you'd see in Excel onto any device um, across the web, um, but also the ability to create effectively create new APIs. So if I create a report, which is a you know a data set with you know some inputs that drive mm -hmm. what that output is, I can surface it as you know what would look like a spreadsheet or some charts, but I can also sur surface it as an API, which can then be ingested into another tool. So for the really advanced dashboarding solutions, that's that's kind of where we're going is is to sort of pipeline through into other systems. And how many are you today? Uh, so there's twelve of us. Twelve. And um, where do you want to take this? Give us the vision. So, um, well, we, we see such efficiency gains, you know, it would be something that anybody with Excel that has challenges and hits problems and stability issues would, would start to use, really. And I think the, um, where we'd like to take it is, is add more connectors, give, put them in the hands of people and allow them to really drive innovation. You know, there's lots of, there's lots of talk about big data and big data technologies and, and how, you know, we solve that problem. But there's still a lot in that kind of small and medium data space where complexity hasn't really been solved, energies are still aren't being serviced, and there are massive projects that are kind of not delivering and, and not delivering real value. There's a lot of problems today that people have with working with data, and we really like to help people tackle those and kind of control that. And you know, this complexity is still there. Well, Darren and John, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. We'll see you probably in London in, uh, in December. So yeah, check out the DeLorean. Time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the hoverboard. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what should people Google? It's the, the Google London, uh, hoverboard. London, London hoverboard. hoverboard. Yeah. yeah. London it's hoverboard. the first video. You check it out. It. It's actually quite amazing. <laughs> These we'll gentlemen were behind it. All right, thanks very much for coming thanks, on theCUBE. Thank you. Great to be All right, on. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. You're watching theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We're live in Boston. Be right back.